this is April with Health for Life Cooking, and this is where I show you how to get more vegetables and other plant foods into your diet deliciously. And we are heading into fall, and that means it's apple season, and I've got a delicious apple crisp that I'm going to show you how to make in this video. So don't go anywhere. So for the fruit part of your apple crisp, we need six cups of chopped apples. And I have chopped these in my Vidalia Chop Wizard, like I showed at the first of the video. And we're going to put three cups into our food processor work bowl. And then I'm going to add a little extra sweetener to this. And these are Honeycrisp apples, so they're super sweet. You may not even need to add any extra sweet, but I'm going to do that for demonstration purposes. And you can either use uh, dates or dried figs. And today I'm going to use dried figs. And I've had these soaking in a quarter cup of water. And I've got two here. You could two to four depending on the size and the sweetness that you'd like. And then I'm going to go ahead and process this and grind it all up into applesauce. At some point during your grinding, you're going to want to add your spices. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of cardamom, and one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. And I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. that all up. Now we're going to add this applesauce to our apples that are the, re the remaining apples that are chopped in our bowl and stir that all around. Get those apples nice and coated with that sweet applesauce. And then we're going to transfer the fruit to our, our uh, cake pan which is this one's about eight, eight and a half by eleven I think. I've done it in an 8x8 pan as well, and it turns out good. It's just a little thicker. For a crust, I'm going to add two cups of chopped apples to my food processor work bowl. And then I'm going to add, again, we're going to add some more extra sweet. And this is four figs. And you can use dates if you don't have figs and these are dried figs and then we're going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of vanilla put on the lid and process that at once again to applesauce consistency once that reaches applesauce consistency, we're going to go ahead and add that to our oats. And this is a little bit of a chunky applesauce, but that's okay. And again, you can grind this up in a blender if that works best for you, if you don't have a food processor. And then we're just going to stir that around and make sure that the oats are well coated with the applesauce. Now, if you've got time to spare, it's beneficial to let this sit for a little bit before you put the crisp together and put it in the oven. That way the oats can absorb some of the moisture from the applesauce and it softens them up just a little bit. Now, the oats you wanna use, I didn't mention, um, you wanna use regular rolled oats, not thick oats. Thick oats tend to be a little bit more chewy. I mean, if you like the chewy, go ahead and use it. I prefer to use the regular rolled oats and you can even use quick oats if you'd like. When you're ready to add your oats, we're just going to carefully lay them over the top of our chopped apples. And I just let those oats sit for probably about 15 minutes. It was just long enough to where I could get my kitchen cleaned up, do some dishes, and then we'll go ahead and finish this up. And again, you don't need to let those oats sit if you don't have time. All right, we're gonna bake that in the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. All right, our apple crisp is done. And it looks so very good. It's nice and bubbly. Mm, now comes the hardest part. I'm waiting a few hours to let that cool down before we dig in. All right, guys, so our um, apple crisp has been sitting for a few hours, so it's cooled down a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this and have a taste. Hopefully it'll come out nice for you. Oh, there we go. 
love it. Beautiful, and it looks and smells so great. This is so yummy, and I love that it's so healthy for you. One thing about using figs is figs have a little tiny seed in them which gives this a little bit of a crunch that I think just adds another dimension to it and I really love it. If you don't like it so much, you can add, you can use dates instead. If you're interested in more whole food, plant-based, no oil dessert recipes, you can find them on my website at healthforlifecooking.com and you can also find over 40 dessert recipes in my cookbook, Whole Food American Favorites. And I've also got a cookbook, Whole Food Goodness. Both of these have a um, lot of whole food, plant-based recipes. They're spiral bound, which makes them very convenient when you're cooking. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so you know when I upload another video. And if you know anyone who's interested in gaining optimal health with plant-based nutrition, please share it. Until next time, this is April with Health for Life Cooking, wishing you the very best of health for the rest